Today, we're going to be taking a special look at Turkey's locally built train on a short journey near Istanbul to see what this train is like. We'll look around the interior of Turkey's very first electric unit and see how it compares to the European imports operating in the country. Along the way, I'll show you the onboard catering offer, review the comfortable seating and even explain some of the things I don't like. Join me for a look at the next generation of Turkey's railways. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here at Gebze near Istanbul and I'm going to be travelling on Turkey's very own self-built high-speed train. I'll be riding on the Ada Express from here to Ada Pazaru. Let's go! Our journey today starts just outside of Gebze station, not far from Istanbul. I would head inside the station building, but my train today actually departs from elsewhere. The other express has its own dedicated platform, a minute's walk down the street. As I make my way there, let's talk about how much of a pain it is to reach Gebze from central Istanbul. Gebze sits at the end of the Marmaray route, a commuter train through Istanbul. This is a high density route, with overcrowding common in peak times, and the trains even have plastic seats. Journey time is over an hour, so it's a pretty unpleasant trip. And frustratingly, they won't even sell you a ticket on the high-speed train, as the journey is too short. But anyway, here we are at the other express platform. There's no grand entrance, rather just a very secure looking fence. Luckily, the train ride itself will be a lot more impressive. Down here, there's a small ticket office for the route, but as I pre-purchased online, I can skip the queue. More on the tickets and pricing later on. This platform has a few basic facilities, important as it is cut off from the rest of the station. If you arrive early, then there's plenty of activity going on, with YHT high-speed trains passing through often. There's also an air-conditioned waiting room, though it was a bit spartan. Previously, this service would run further into Istanbul, terminating at Pendik. This was a much better location, and also had more convenient transport connections. With little else to see here at Gebze, it's time to introduce today's train. A manual ticket inspection takes place, and then you can access the platform. And here it is. This is a Tecedede E4400 series, built by Turesash in the Sakarya province, not far from here. This fact is proudly displayed on all carriages. I've also translated it into English. This modern looking train is the first electric unit to be designed and built from scratch in Turkey, with other trains being imported from Europe or Asia. There are future hopes to export these trains to other European countries, so I was definitely looking forward to trying this set, especially as it has an onboard buffet and even a first class carriage that we'll look at once we get moving. Our brand new train today is operated by Tecidide Tashüme Cülük, Turkey's national operator. I love their white and blue livery, it looks really smart on the unit. Carriage numbers and destination screens can be found on each door. Time to get on board! I've got a seat reservation in coach 3, in the middle of the train. Stepping into the carriage, my first impressions were positive. The interior feels light and airy perfect for our short trip over to Adapazaru. My seat will be 12A, a forward-facing window seat. Today's route will see us heading east along the Sea of Marmara. We'll call it Izmit before running along Lake Sapancha. Journey time is 1 hour and 23 minutes, covering 95 kilometers or about 59 miles. Departure from Gibse is delayed a few minutes, as we wait for a late-running YHT high-speed train to overtake us. We end up leaving at 13.26, smoothly riding out of the station and past the depot, where this route's trains are based. Roughly half of the trains on this route are still formed of older loco-hauled sets, and if you want to know how to find which departures use this new train, then you'll need to check the seating plans. The railway out of Gebze offers some excellent views of the Sea of Marmara, an inland body of water south of Istanbul, separating it from the otherwise nearby city of Bursa. It seems there's a bit more congestion ahead, so let's take this time to look around the interior. 
we'll start with the seats. These look great in the two-tone blue design. And I have to say, they were actually pretty comfortable too, being fairly firm but with great ergonomics. On top of this, there's a nice winged headrest with a well-padded head cushion. It reminded me of the German ICE trains. Next to this is an individual reading light, activated by touch sensors. Between each seat, there's a folding armrest. And at the edge of the seat, you'll find the recline button. It doesn't give you much, but it's always a nice touch. As for legroom, these trains are very good, and there's plenty of space to stretch out. A folding footrest is located underneath the seat in front. Above this, there's a small storage net. And also a seat back table, deployed by releasing the catch. It has a groove for a drink, as well as a spot to prop up a mobile phone or tablet. So, this is a pretty good seat. I'd be very pleased to sit here for journeys of a few hours, and it's definitely welcome on a short regional route like this one. Meanwhile, back outside, we're calling at our first station. This is Dilis Kielisi, a port town on the Sea of Marmara. This section of line seems to be undergoing some sort of reconstruction project, hence why we were slightly delayed. Almost any rail journey in Turkey will pass a construction site, with so many expansions and route upgrades underway. It really is great to see a country invest in railways so much. The Sea of Marmara is host to a lot of industry as well, taking advantage of the close proximity to a major shipping route, the Bosphorus Strait in Istanbul. Construction works are even taking place at some of the stations, with Hereke temporarily only having one platform available. Originally opened in 1873 as part of a commuter railway from Istanbul, the station has served the town known for its carpet production ever since. Despite being a short route of just over an hour, this train does feature onboard catering. Firstly, somebody came around selling pretzels and this was then followed by a run with the catering trolley, selling snacks, hot drinks and cold drinks. I went for a cup of chai or tea and a peach juice drink. The price was pretty reasonable, and here's a look at the full menu. I did mention that the train had a buffet car, and this is true but unfortunately, it wasn't open at any point on my journey. A shame too, as it's an impressive feature for a regional train. The buffet seems to feature a full kitchen and a number of bar stalls in different locations. As we run past a container port, let's go and have a look around the rest of the train, including the first class. These trains are accessible, with a full wheelchair lift equipped in carriage too. Next to this, you will of course find the accessible toilet, and two dedicated wheelchair spaces. In carriage one, you'll find first class, kinda. This has a similar style to my carriage, except the seats are much wider, and in a 2 plus 1 layout. You couldn't actually book this carriage online, as it was reserved for on-the-day purchases. In fact, the entire train was actually sold as first class for some reason. Now moving on to the toilets. One of these is provided per carriage. This is a western-style sitting toilet, but the train also has some Turkish-style squat toilets available. The soap dispenser was working fine but believe me, it's not easy to do this with one hand. The water was also working fine. And this is where the train seriously caught me off guard. The hand dryer is insane. I really wasn't expecting that amount of power. Also, the toilet features a bidet as is commonplace in Turkey. Lastly, there's a vending machine on board. 
This didn't seem to have any prices displayed, and with such a limited selection, you might as well buy from the trolley instead. We are now arriving at Izmit, and with a population of around 300,000 people, it's the largest intermediate stop en route. It's also a stop on the YHT high-speed train services. Many passengers from these would connect into the Ada Express. From here, we speed out of the city, towards Lake Sapancha. The route becomes a four-track mainline, and we ride on the high-speed railway rated for 250 km an hour. This is despite running at only 120 km an hour. This station is Buyuk Dervent, which has some temporary platforms on the high-speed line, to allow the area to be served while upgrades take place on the other tracks. But let's turn our attention to the interior once again. Beneath the seats, you can find a power socket. One for each passenger. Coat hooks are found above your seat, on the window pillars. There are also coat hooks mounted on the side of each seat. Luggage storage is in the form of overhead luggage racks only. I didn't see any luggage stacks, so this may not be enough room on longer journeys. Another thing I noticed was just how smooth this train was. It had a silky ride quality, and I didn't notice any bumps or lurches on the journey. And despite generally feeling like a premium product, I couldn't help but notice this. The seating itself seems to be made of really cheap plastic. Though I have to admit, these are very minor problems, so it's pretty easy to fix these in the future. Anyway, this is Sapancha a popular lakeside destination for Istanbulites to come for day trips or weekends away. In fact, this very high demand is actually the reason I had trouble booking my tickets for this train. As you can see, there are a few seats available on the train here, but as a man, I cannot book a seat next to a woman. I got the last available seat. Whilst I understand and appreciate cultural differences, I really think this should be better handled, as there were still technically 20 plus seats for sale. Especially as, when I got to my seat on the return leg, there was a female passenger sat next to me anyway. So how much did I pay for this ticket? Tickets go on sale 5 days in advance, and they are always the same base price. With a youth discount of 15%, I paid 71 Turkish Lira, which I think is a great price. However, since travelling a few months ago, the prices have increased by nearly 50% to 105 Turkish Lira. This is the Bridge of Justinian, running over the river Sakarya. It dates back to Roman times, linking Istanbul, or what was then known as Constantinople, to the Roman Empire's eastern territories. We're now approaching the penultimate station, Mithat Pasha. Whilst it doesn't look like much, it's actually an interesting one. This area is home of the Turesash train manufacturing plant, where this train was built. A few body shells are visible within the facility. As we approach Adapazaru, we pass by an old Airbus plane, now used as a quirky restaurant that's well worth a visit. Eventually, we pull into the station at 15.01 running about 19 minutes late. Overall, I was surprised by the Turesash electric train. It was very comfortable, smooth and well built. Turkey should be proud of this new train, and I look forward to seeing what local manufacturing produces in the future. As always, let me know what you thought of this brand new Turkish train, and for a look at the country's luxurious high-speed YHT, then click up here now.